how you doing? <laughs> oh, man, I had to make a dose of vitamin C. Oh, goodness, I feel great. Well, as good as a fat, bald guy that looks like Uncle Fester can feel anyway. Man, I hate these iPads. They suck. Apple, what a company, huh? Phew. Um, there are ways to simplify things. And of course, and I can gloat about this, that I mentioned the unification of uh, matter and light uh, years ago, and it was proven about six months ago. And I talked about it where uh, current day science has proven that ultra high energy light uh, to a coherent uh, emissions of light, and of course light's not an emission, they were able to actually create fundamental matter. So what if we could actually, and no one's ever done this before in any video or in any book, including Eric Dullard, is uh, unify things very, very simply. As I've said specifically in uh, my definitions, which is in the link below in the descriptions where I actually define things like ether, dielectric, of course dielectric is ether under stress or strain, magnetism is a three-dimensional uh, force vector, the inverse of uh, the dielectric, i.e. the loss of energy or inertia, which manifests the uh, centrifugal force and motion vector, which is inversely proportional to uh, the dendritic ether under stress or strain um, energy modality, and that's all a field is, is an ether perturbation modality. Well, together they, of course, form the conjugate geometry of the universe, respectively the torus and the hyperbola. But what if we could combine uh, three different things very simply? And for certain, no one has done this. I mean, not Tesla or Steinmetz or Heaviside or Dollard or anybody else for that matter. Because Mother Nature is divinely simple. And if you can't explain it simply, then you truly don't understand it. And by the way, that's a quote from Einstein. Because even a broken clock is right twice a day. Um, specifically, we need to uh, unify uh, three different uh, types of uh, ether perturbation modalities. Um, specifically light or EMR, electromagnetic radiation. And then we need to uh, talk about, uh, and I hate the word, what we call it. Tesla called it as a death ray, but specifically we're referring to scalar waves. And scalar waves have no wave components, so it's a completely illegitimate name. They're not measured in cycles uh, per second or wavelength, uh, rather in uh, volts per second. And it's a longitudinal um, energy release. And Release, of course, once again, is an emission. None of these things are emission. Specifically, they're ether perturbation modalities. And a perturbation is not an emission, ever. Because we all suffer from the same delusion as uh, we do from sound, speed of sound. Well, sound travels, so sound doesn't travel at all. Sound is not an emission. It's a perturbation of nitrogen and oxygen. Nikola Tesla, of course, accurately said that uh, light is nothing other than a sound wave in the ether, which is perfectly apropos since light nor sound are an emission. They're a perturbation of the medium. So we have to combine uh, light and we have to combine uh, scalar waves, which is a horrible word, and we need to combine electricity. Now, uh, Charles Proteus Steinmetz uh, referred to AC generators as quote-unquote churning up the ether. The AC generators of his day did a lot of uh, churning up of the ether, trying to come up with three simple... Um, uh, mental visualizations of these three things as one. And if we think of uh, a medium, that being the ether, which of course has no Cartesian reality. In other words, it's not phenomena. If it were phenomena, it would of course have uh, measure and magnitude, and it would have a Cartesian coordinate, X, Y, Z coordinate in a space and time. And that of course is certainly not applicable to the ether. So how can we think of these three different things? Kind of like ice, water, and steam, which are of course all one thing, right? All field modalities are one thing. I have over many hundreds of videos combined logically and sensibly magnetism, dielectricity, electricity, and so called gravity, which is nothing other than uh, non point source mutual mass acceleration, into one thing. So, how do we explain light or EMR, electromagnetic radiation, scalar waves, and electricity? So, I'm going to use, no particular order, electricity in reference to an ether perturbation modality. I don't have a piece of fabric here. Well, actually, I do. Here's a piece of fabric, a little cloth. Um, uh, conventional electricity, of course, electricity is a hybrid. It's five times cycles, Q and Planck of electrification, specifically also, too, explaining electricity 
is uh, extremely simple if you understand it as a hybrid. Also, too, it makes explaining what an electromagnet is and how it works extremely simple. Uh, Charles Prody Steinmetz in his book, Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulses, stated specifically, and this book was written a little over 100 years ago, 1914, I believe, uh, I believe 1914, that even the electrical theorists of his day completely complicated the idea of electricity. Electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism, or five times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Uh, that's uh, one of Dollard's uh, famous uh, sayings, which of course is accurate, and it's not belonging to Dollard. It's specifically he got that from Electrical Discharges, Waves, and Impulses, written by Charles Prody Steinmetz. So let's simplify things since we're talking about the medium that is the ether. And I'm trying to go for a very, very simple um, image visualization such that we're able to combine light, electricity, and scalar waves. Yes? So in the case of uh, the ether perturbation modality that is electricity, we're actually talking about. So we're talking about churning up the ether, you know, like someone in a pond that's actually flapping their arms, for example. So we're actually talking about uh, generating, uh, you know, a rippling, which of course has a cycle in the case of electricity. It has a dual component. There is no uh, a longitudinal pulse perturbation as in the case of light. So imagine, the only best analogy I could think of is actually rippling a piece of fabric where we actually, um, like any AC generator, because that's all an AC generator is. And by the way, and I've said this, in many videos, and no one else uh, had ever said this about explaining what an AC generator is. And it's really too, true, just like in the case of a magnet, which is Mother Nature's uh, phenomena. Mother Nature does have natural magnets in the case of lodestones, of course. Also, to um, pulsars and quasars, the, the, the dielectric, uh, i.e. the plane of inertia, is at the middle, and yet the magnetic field around a magnet, obviously, is around the magnet. An AC generator is inverse to that, where we actually have uh, the plane of inertia on uh, the outside, i.e. the dielectric reflector, and the magnetic core on the inside. We actually set this uh, in motion uh, with a temporal variable. What you're doing is you're just creating, just like this, so the ether, and of course the ether and it's hard for people to visualize this. We're, we're talking about and trying to visualize something that is being flapped in the case of the medium that is the ether that has no Cartesian reality. It has no XYZ coordinate. It can't be phenomena. And yet we still have to understand the ether in counter space, which is not a place or a locus, nor has it any phenomena. We have to imagine this medium, which is everywhere and nowhere. Yeah. And there's, by the way, a huge distinction between nothing and no thing. That's a huge point in metaphysics that everybody really doesn't grasp. There's a huge difference between nothing, meaning nihil ex nihilo, and not a thing. Not a thing is not the same as nothing. Not a thing means it is not phenomenal, i.e. it is noumena. So we actually have to imagine electricity, just as in the case of an AC generator, of the ether being flapped like a piece of fabric being flapped. And of course, um, the transmission lines and the guidelines of uh, electricity are nothing other than a field guide for electricity. So now let's get on to uh, scalar waves because we're all talking about three different things which are just one thing. Obviously scalar waves, electricity, and light are all just ether perturbation modalities. Now I talk about electricity, magnetism, uh, dielectricity, and gravity in countless other videos, but I've never made a video like this combining light scalar waves and electricity. In the case of scalar waves, we're talking about a different type of ether modality in which it is extremely of the utmost absolute efficiency if uh, most energy emissions are not that efficient and they are not point source. So not only is uh, scalar waves, and I hate to say scalar waves, incredibly efficient, but it is also two point source. In the case of electricity, where we're talking about the ether being a piece of fabric that is being flapped, we need to think of scalar waves, which is, uh, uh, has no transverse component, of course, since it is measured in volts per second, it has no transverse wave component, and therefore does not partake of time. C, or the so-called speed of light, which is not a speed at all, is rather a rate of induction, or to the hysteresis of the ether, is exactly like this. And this is not a stick, it's a laser. But you know, this could easily be conceived of as a stick, and I'm going to put a stick against the table here. It'd just be like uh, creating an energy pulse, which has no transverse component, and it travels instantaneously. Now imagine, if you will, and this is easy to do as a thought experiment, a stick, say, now let's say the stick is propped up, because nobody can hold a stick you know, that's like 
a thousand feet long, right? So it's being propped up, say, by a bunch of U sticks. You're actually pounding on the end of the stick. You have instantaneous manifestation of that energy at the other end of the stick. There's no transverse or wave component. Of course, the stick in our thought experiment would have to be perfectly rigid. You know, most sticks are flexible to some point. So when you hit it, you know, the, the, the stick, just like an arrow, and you see actually an arrow when... Uh, in uh, high-speed filming, will will bend drastically and bend again, and it'll eventually straighten out. We have to imagine an unflexible stick. So, in the case of scalar wave, we're talking about ultra-high efficiency, but also to point source energy emission. And when we say emission, we only mean this as a colloquialism because no ether perturbation modality is actually an emission. It is a perturbation of the medium, just the same as a person in the middle of a pond flapping their arms is not an emission. They're creating a disturbance in the medium, in that case, uh, the water. So, In the case of EMR or light, the, the closest accurate analogies would be one of several types, like a punch or an explosion or uh, resistance energy bunching. In the case of a light bulb, we're talking about the, the filament where resistance is set up. Or in the case of something um, like uh, uh, an induction melter, I don't know if a lot of people are not very familiar with an induction melter, it actually starts to heat up. And the more energy that's in it, the frequency changes. It goes from red, which is hot, but that's relatively low energy. And then it uh, starts making its way to orange and yellow and white. And then it'll eventually turn white, white, white hot. And then eventually, before it starts to melt, it will start to turn uh, uh, blue, ultra high energy. Um, this energy bunching. So when you think in terms of light, we, uh, and of course everybody knows what a punch is like. You don't know if you've ever seen a slow-mo a video of someone being... Uh, you know, punched or punching something, you actually see not only a transverse component where there are outward uh, ripples created, which are the transverse electrical magnetic in the case of EMR. All EMR is a coaxial circuit. And when I say coaxial circuit, I, I assume, and most people may not be aware of this, so what the cross section of a coax cable looks like. Coax cable comes from your satellite dish, your TV, or from TV to various other devices in your house. It has a center uh, conductor. It has a dielectric uh, plastic core. It doesn't have to be plastic. Actually, the most efficient uh, coax uh, cables uh, are air coax. They're incredibly expensive. They're just one hollow copper tube with a, a, a helix of plastic that's holding another large copper tube. And these are used actually in ultra-high transmission lines at uh, TV stations. So in the case of EMR light, we're looking at the analogy of a punch or an explosion or resistance energy bunching. You know, resistance energy bunching is, uh, you know, a piling up or a funneling of an enormous amount of energy, and it's actually bunching up. Ever seen a, a train? Uh, it'll actually hit something, it'll move, it'll slip its tracks, and then the front of the train will hit the dirt or the gravel, and all these millions of tons of trains, uh, cars behind the train, they start to accordion. Yeah? The actual cars will start accordioning. It's a going accordion style. And that, of course, is what the uh, light is like. And this uh, train piling up accordion style is no different than resistance energy bunching. But the other analogies I can think of will be an explosion or a punch. And this is a uh, compound, yet the most simple, because the most uh, simple natural ether perturbation modality in the universe is light. And doesn't necessarily mean visible light, because radio Visible light, uh, ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma radiation, they are all exactly one and the same thing. They are only differentiated out by their capacitances because the smaller the spatial, i.e. the higher the frequency, um, you know, it, uh, these are all one and the same thing. Uh, infrared being the weakest, you know, the visible light, then, uh, you know, X-ray, then gamma, and many, many magnitudes above gamma radiation is that of the fundamental particle which is what we see being emitted by galactic jets and also, too, what they're called astrophysical jets, one of the same thing, i.e. being emitted at the geromagnetic precessional axes of rotation, not only of uh, pulsars and quasars, however, pure matter is being emitted by the trillions of tons from the centers of galaxies. There are many, many countless genuine photographs of galactic jets. I can't believe people want to deny them like that's fake or something. It's completely ludicrous. You know, these images are being captured all over the world by countless different telescopes. So, Since Mother Nature is divinely simple, there's only one fundamental thing, the ether. And, of course, you know, just as ridiculous to assume that infrared light and visible light and gamma radiation are different things. No, well, they're all 
uh, electromagnetic radiation, you know? They're all light, fundamentally. It may not be visible light, obviously. Human beings see a super, super spe narrow spectrum of visible light, but they're all light. They're all EMR. Well, scalar waves are what Nikola Tesla called death rays, and uh, electricity and light are all the same thing. They should be understood in your mental analogy of how these uh, perturbations occur, depending on the source of the transference, not emission. Transference is more accurate. Transference of energy, like I said, in case of uh, electricity, we're talking about you know the ether being fabric and ripples uh, being generated in the ether. And this is exactly what Charles Proudy Steinmetz meant when he said you know generators were churning up the ether. They are. They're flapping the ether. And, of course, the transmission lines are uh, guidelines of fields, field guidelines. That's all any transmission line is, is a field guideline. And, of course, scalar waves is no different than, as I said specifically, it's ultra, ultra, extreme high efficiency because it has no transverse component. If it were ult inefficient, it would be gamma radiation or some form of light. But when uh, the, the transference of energy is insanely efficient or ultra efficient and it is a point source uh, transference of energy then it's just exactly like this you know it's like pounding on a stick it has no transverse component this is what Nikola Tesla called his death ray this is what scalar wave energy is and explaining light I just got done explaining light so the reconciliation of these three things as one is incredibly simple I hope I made it simple I mean it's easy to understand Electricity is a flapping fabric, yeah, because that's all really electricity is, and electricity is once again a hybrid. And it's not an independent autonomous ether modality. Well, none of them are because they're all one and the same thing, but they're only individuated by and as such of uh, their uh, transferences of energy by the type of transferences that they are. They're either point source and ultra efficient, or they're actually flapping the ether in the case of electrical generation. And a generator, by the way, doesn't actually generate electricity. What it does is it manifests electricity. There's a huge distinction there, as I've pointed out many, many times. And the last one, of course, which is the most common um, ether perturbation modality in the universe, which is light, whether that be infrared or visible light or X-ray or gamma. No simple one. So They're only individuated by their transference modalities of the point of origin of the transference modalities where energy is lost. Whether that be the sun, whether that be from an AC generator, whether it be from Nikola Tesla's death ray machine, <laughs> which, by the way, the government does have. We call them dues, though, directed energy weapons. So, Anyway, I hope I clarified that. I meant to clarify it and make it really, really simple by using simple analogies like a, you know, hitting the end of a stick or you know, flapping a piece of fabric in the case of electricity or uh, you know, a punch or a resistance energy bunching in the case of light. So... I hope I simplified this, and uh, I love doing videos that no one else has done before because no one ever else in any videos reconciled these different uh, ether modalities as one thing, and they are ultimately one thing. They cannot be different. Than, well, here we have electricity, and over here we have light. It's like, no, they're all the same thing. So, only distinguished by what I had already said. So, thank you so much for watching, and have a lovely day.